we'll go with the first obvious one. Bloody Mary. <laughs> that, I thought that lady... lady <laughs> see, look, there we go. <laughs> I, I, I love look. the Quinlan bleeps herself button. Um. <laughs> lady. <laughs> that lady I thought was going to get me at every turn. Like, <laughs> I thought if I looked in the mirror for too long, she would be there. No matter if I ever said her name or not. That lady was going to get me. Hey guys, welcome back to It Takes Two. I'm Quinlan. And I'm Emily. And I just want to let you guys know, before we get into this, that we've officially made it. We have haters now. We do. We really do. So I think that, like, when your presence on the internet makes men mad, I think that is the first sign that you have accomplished something. You are making your footprint, your mark. So I just wanted to put that out there that like we're officially YouTubers, podcasters, whatever you want to call us. Yes. Influencers. We're influencing these men to hate us. But <laughs> yes, we um, are. And it's shocking because we never expected the majority of our audience to be men in general, let alone all of our hate comments. All of our hate comments are men. But I mean, I expect <laughs> it from men more than women. Like it just Specifically, makes sense. our Reddit episode caused some waves. Caused People some waves. really disliked the fact that we read a Reddit story out loud. Yeah, especially the gym bros. They really came for us. <laughs> they so. did. And there was like almost no opinion in those clips. It was just the Reddit story. And then we, we were, were like, wow. Just reading the story. And they were like, ah, oh, these stupid beep, 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 beep. Like, they went off on us. So, yes. you know. But. Emily said I can't attack them, so she said we have to keep it civil, so... We are a section of positivity on the internet, okay? People can come in our civil. comments, but if you like us and you are here to support this community, we are only positive vibes. Positive. Yes. Positive. Quinlan's not allowed to attack anyone. I am positivity. Not attack. So, okay. Moving on. <laughs> Before I get too heated about the haters, let's get into today's episode topic. Um, we are talking about fear. Specifically, like, childhood fears versus what scares us now. Kind of like this weird transition of, are we still scared of the same things? Have our fears done, like, complete change, you know? We're kind of just talking about spooky stuff. Maybe should we just start with things that scared us as kids? Like, number sure. one fears? Just to start in the past, work our way forward? Yes. Let's do that. Okay. Um, we'll go with the first obvious one. Bloody Mary. <laughs> that, I thought that lady... lady <laughs> see, look, there we go. <laughs> I, I, I love look. the Quinlan bleeps herself button. Um. <laughs> lady? <laughs> that lady... I thought was going to get me at every turn. Like, <laughs> I thought if I looked in the mirror for too long, she would be there. No matter if I ever said her name or not, that lady was going to get me. You know what? I can go off of that because <laughs> I I always, as a child, had a fear of getting up in the middle of the night and, like, seeing someone in my reflection in the yeah, bathroom mirror. Literally. Ugh. I feel <laughs> Terrifying. Like that, I feel like that didn't go away all the way. But, like, in where I live now, I don't feel that way. But, like, when I go to yeah. my parents' house, I still definitely feel that way about it. But it's that mirror. It's that specific mirror. Oh, yeah. My bathroom mirror at my parents' house? No. Mm -mm. Terrified. You leave the lights off and you don't look. You do no. not look. You do not. So, yeah. Um, what a, That was, like, one of the first things that came to mind when I thought of childhood fears. Bloody Mary. I always was... forget that you're afraid of her because, like, as a child, I had zero concept of Bloody Mary. Like, zero. No. <laughs> we had, we would have sleepovers and people would be like, let's do Bloody Mary. And I'd be like, oh. I'd be like crying. Like, please don't make me do it. But it was so funny because, like, I was, like, everyone thought of me as this, like, hardcore, like, 
about the, like, if you make me say it, I'll cry. <laughs> so, very big turn on me right there, yeah. That reminds me of your story about your apartment seance, or your attic seances. Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> I would do that stuff, but when I was, yeah. like, okay, so that was, like, high school, but I'm talking, like, yeah, even, like, middle like, school. Like, little, little, you knew Yeah, about? like, elementary school, like. How? How? Where did you... Public uh TV maybe? public school and just everybody What were you knew watching about... on TV? I don't know. Everybody knew about Bloody Mary though in elementary school. We joke about it in the bathroom at school. <sighs> we had very different experiences. <gasps> See, by high school she wasn't so much a fear anymore. <laughs> but... Fair. <laughs> so like middle school and younger, she was a definite fear constantly. Still gives me the heebie-jeebies. Like, I, you couldn't pay me to go in the bathroom and say that. But... Okay. You couldn't pay me to do that either because I just... Same with, like, Ouija boards and stuff. I won't mess with it. Like, I don't know how I feel about it, but I ain't taking any but chances. I'm not taking any chances. No, literally, that's how I feel about her. I'm like, see, I don't really believe in it, but you couldn't pay me to do it because what if something did happen? Yeah, no one's so, taking that chance. Yeah. Same with, like, haunted dolls and everything. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know if I believe that. I don't know if but, I believe that that doll is haunted, but I'm not taking a chance. Not taking no chances there. <laughs> okay. So. Huge yeah. childhood fear. My grandma, huh. her bedroom is full of, like, porcelain dolls. And oh, okay. She'd be like, oh, you can sleep in my room. And I'd be like, mm-mm, mm-mm. Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. They're just all staring at you in like cracked faces and you're just like, this is how every horror movie ends. I'm good. No. Okay. So another polar opposite right there is my bedroom was full of porcelain dolls growing up. And mm-hmm. I had these little porcelain masks all over the wall, which Ugh. also led me to get my tattoo this week that literally is like porcelain doll masks on my arm. <laughs> You know what? That's probably why I had the reaction of, you know, it's not for me, but. <laughs> so, literally. But yes, the doll fear, still, yes, I get it. Mm-hmm. But see, porcelain dolls wasn't ever really. They, my mom always had them in our room growing up. Like, she put them. We had, like, this giant wrap around shelf. Here, like, that's absurd to, to me. Absolutely not. Them. Nope. <laughs> so, no, that was never a. A fear of mine. <laughs> I do have oh. another absurd fear that uh, okay. I did lose. Okay. I still hate them, but I'm not actively frightened by them. Okay. Sock monkeys. I hate oh, them. I thought we were going a different direction there. Okay, <laughs> sock monkeys. <laughs> no, absolutely terrified me. My grandma used to always leave one for me when I'd come visit her when I was little, and I was like. <laughs> My dad would laugh every time because he's like, you hate these things. I'm like, uh-huh. They're, just, just they're terrifying. <laughs> like, they're dead-faced, okay? Stitched yeah. up mouth, button eyes, absolutely not. Yeah, I still not hate a, them. Not actively not scared, but hate them. Yeah, not a fan. I never mm-hmm. really got the hype around sock monkeys. Like, Mm-mm. um, Where I thought you were going with this <laughs> was clowns, Okay. Mm-hmm. See, that is on my list for when I was a kid. I thought clowns were, like, the scariest people of all time. (laughs) Okay? I thought I was going to die if I ever saw one. So, actively scared of those. Not anymore, though. See, like, I think it might have been my grandma let me watch, like, the original It. Oh, yeah. When I was, like, two years old, three years old. And I was, like, afraid to take a shower. My mom's like, why are you afraid to take a shower? Like, you've never had a fear of showers before. And I was like, the drain. And she's like, what do you mean? And I was like, the drain. The clown is going to get me. And she was like, are you kidding me? Like, she knew right away that her mom let me watch it. And that I was just terrified. But now, you know, they're just clowns. Like, that doesn't scare me. <laughs> yeah. They're still creepy. Yeah. And I was I was never a fan of them. So I was never actively scared, but clowns weren't like a big like a big yeah. thing for me. Um 
I did actively hide from Ronald McDonald once. I was like, Dad, don't let him see me. <laughs> don't. <laughs> I literally like behind my dad's legs. Ron- he's creepy. Don't like it. But like, yeah, not an active fear. But I was also like this big, and he was like six yeah, foot Ronald tall McDonald's- man. No, <laughs> no, not for me. I have a funnier one that okay. uh, I thought was going to be a lot more prevalent, like relevant <laughs> to my life. These, like, I think I know what you're talking about. I think I remember talking about this. No snakes. Oh, okay, that's not where I thought you were going. Rattlesnakes. I thought that was just like something that people dealt with all the time. It is. And weird. I was like, and so I was just like terrified i was like oh my god what happens if i see a rattlesnake what am i supposed to do what if no one's around like this like it just so much anxiety around rattlesnakes being a thing i've literally never seen a rattlesnake before in my life okay why was this such a big deal to me when i was a child i don't know could have been the media you were watching because like down here my aunt used to tell us all the time about, oh, yeah, there was a rattlesnake in the pool or by the pool, and the dogs yeah. found it. You had to, like, call the exterminator. And I was like, I don't, I don't like this. <laughs> no. Yeah, no. Oh, well, I did find a snake in our basement one time. Okay. Okay. And that was, like, I don't know how old I was, but it was like the snake fear was going away. And then I found a live <laughs> snake in our basement. I don't do like, it. I went down there to do laundry, and I was like, that's fake. And I went upstairs, I was like, Mom, did you put a fake snake in the basement? And she's like, <laughs> oh, why would I do that? I was like, because there's one down there? <laughs> and she was like, what do you mean? And I was like, there's a giant snake in the basement. <laughs> Uh-oh. And so we went, my dad came and went down there, and it, sure enough, it was like a four-foot-long corn snake, which they're not poisonous. Like but they're four pets, feet long? but it was four feet long. So like, I was freaked out because I was like, "Oh, who put a fake snake downstairs?" I like went upstairs. All that's like, four fifths of me. That <laughs> no, is absurd. No, literally. And so I went upstairs, and I was like, all like, kind of like, mm, "Did you happen to put a fake snake downstairs?" And she's like, "What the? What are you talking about? Like, why would I do that?" And I was like, "I don't know." Um, oh my! I was goodness. hoping you had an explanation for the giant snake in the basement. <laughs> And like, that can't like, be just, like, a real snake. Like, <laughs> I thought somebody was playing a prank on me, okay? So, snakes were, a, I don't know, I just, I thought snakes and quicksand were just gonna be the biggest parts of our lives. Okay, I thought that's where you were going. I thought you were going with the quicksand story, because I always remember you being like, I, I thought quicksand was gonna be a lot bigger deal in my life than it no, is. literally, snakes and quicksand, I just, like, I was prepared, you know, like, what am I going to do in these situations? I would talk myself through them. Did and you just, like, watch too much Indiana Jones or something? I, don't, I literally have no idea. Because the one time I encountered a snake was <laughs> in the basement. So that, I guess, kind of reinforced the fact that, like, you can be scared of snakes showing up randomly. But not really scared of them anymore, I guess. Or, I mean, obviously not as quicksand. Because who the hell just You found any quicksand sand? yet? Yeah. yeah. I, I I think that's only a thing in like sub Saharan Africa or rainforests. Yeah. <laughs> I might be wrong about that, but uh I'm but pretty sure that's It's not something we should ever have to deal with. You're more likely to fall into a pit of concrete than quicksand. You know what a weird fear I had as a child was? Huh. I thought I was gonna be poisoned by poly pocket clothes. Oh. Like, Cause, like you know they left your hands all like or... powdery? Yeah. That freaked me out as a child, and I was like, must wash. But I was also like a real germaphobe. Didn't even have dirt on me. Like, I think it was more of a texture thing, and I was just like... Also, that was about the time when, like, all of the news articles were coming out about kids eating Polly Pocket clothes and, like, that being a problem. Yeah, So I just associated it, and I was like, every time I play with Polly Pockets, must wash hands. Like, could die, could ingest... Walked like this to bathroom. <laughs> You're like, will not touch anything. Cross contamination. Nope. Uh, absolutely not. No, taking any <laughs> chances here. Yeah, staying safe. Yes. The real dangers in life. Holly pocket <laughs> clothes. Exactly. The silent killer. 
Yeah. <laughs> Who would have thought? You know, Emily did. Emily. I thought. did. <laughs> None of us were worried about the uh, the little spray water beads that ended up actually being toxic to kids. It was Polly Pocket oh. clothes. Polly Pockets. Yes. That, that was the killer. So should we transition to our adult fears? Things that didn't really ever scare you then, yes. but do now? You want to okay. know my biggest fear right now? That my camera's what? just not recording, and I don't know why. <laughs> see, see, that was another big issue for me, was like, how, when I was coming up with this list, okay, it was constantly like, is this a list of things I'm scared of, or a list of things that causes me internal anxiety, like, forever? Yeah. So I was trying to find the balance between the two things, because... I'm an anxious person. We're all anxious people. Gen Z's, the cons, and cautious, anxious, whatever. Mildly, you know. So I was that that line between anxiety and a true fear. Okay, so yeah, I think I got a few. Okay. Um, should I start with my first one? Yeah, go for it. This is my most recent newly discovered fear. Uh oh. Thanks to TikTok. Uh oh. Um, doppelgangers. Oh, like like that picture of the guy who met the guy on the airplane who looks exactly like him. Well, no, like the fact that people are like posting about like if you ever see yourself, run as fast as you possibly can, and you're like, what? <laughs> and then like if you ever see somebody that is staring at you that looks exactly like you, run. It seemed I never had that fear until I started seeing these TikToks, and now that I've seen like one, they all are coming up. So it's just like mm. constantly reaffirming this fear that I didn't think I had. Like I've seen Us, which is literally a movie about doppelgangers. Yeah, one like the alternate reality family or alternate universe family killing the family, and I've seen that, and it didn't really cause anything. I seen that when it first came out, and I saw it in theaters. But, like, now seeing these TikToks, for some reason, is, like, I will, like, look both ways when I'm walking down the hallway before I start entering it. I'm like, what the, what, what do you do if you see yourself? Like, how do you even react to that? Like, it's such an un- I don't think you'd even recognize it to be yourself. And see, that's what I'm saying. But at the same time, like, it's such an unreasonable fear. Like, it's not something I should, like, I'll ever encounter myself, yeah. you know? But, like seeing somebody just at the end of a dark hallway staring at you and it's you uh well i feel like so that's the less terrifying. likely thing to happen if you run into your doppelganger so well just the idea that they're coming to kill you your doppelganger is coming to kill you and like <laughs> you'll see them before they see you or they see you before you see them oh no i feel like that's a fear i just couldn't have growing up with like Riss and just like us being basically twins that weren't even related. Yeah. So I feel like just I had that already. So it, it just seems so absurd to me. Let's go deep fear, okay? Okay. Play on words intended. Um, water. Like deep Ooh. water, ocean. That's a good one. The sinking feeling. Probably doesn't help that I'm not the best swimmer. Not water inclined, <laughs> yeah, but just yeah. like the deep pit of the unknown. But even lakes, just like I don't need to be there. Rivers, I don't need to be there. River, fine. You can stand up in it, fine. Deep water, yeah. mm mm. There's sharks. There's things that can eat you. I just, yeah, boats make me a little anxious. So you say river that you could stand in, and I, I just don't because. I lived on the Columbia River, which <laughs> you can't stand. No, <laughs> that I consider like a deep water pool. I mean, like, yeah. where you go floating on. Like a creek? Like a, a I was not raised outdoorsy. I don't know the difference. Okay, okay. okay. I've been Fair floating enough. on a river once. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. There are shallow rivers, I getcha. But yeah, no, open water, or like deep open water. Ugh, terrifying. Anything that'll go over your head and has any sort of current, absolutely yeah. not. Yeah, I hate boats. I'm slowly getting over the fear, but yeah, I used to hate boats. Like, 
cry if you put me on a boat, but... Well, we always used to take the ferry (laughs) out to Whidbey to visit family, and, like, sometimes you'd be coming in a storm, and the boat would literally be like this, the waves would be coming over, and then they'd always slam the dock, and it's like, this is how I die. This is how I die. This is it. Yep. This is it. I'm done. I was seven. I'm like, we're gonna die. This is, this is, we're dying. I'm saying my goodbyes now. Yeah. My dad almost also got ran over by a shipping boat once. Oh. My grandpa was like, hey, let's go test this boat I made. And we're like, cool, grandpa, you made a boat. Let's go. But I'm not getting in it. I'm not getting in it. I'll watch y'all sink in it. They literally got part of the way out. Motor dies. Boat's taken on water. My dad no. has to get the oars out and is paddling. My grandpa's got a bucket scooping water out. <laughs> no. <laughs> and there's Done. just a shipping boat coming. And they're like, ah. And me and my mom <laughs> are standing on the shore much. recording it. Somewhere there's a video of this. Oh, wow. <laughs> so helpful. <laughs> we were. It was a we're really gonna funny We're going to get it on sight. video. <laughs> yep. Uh, they were fine. Funny. It was fine. The boat was yeah. fine. I think, okay, boats. I guess it kind of connects with boats. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize I had this fear until recently. It's more of like a phobia than a fear. Mm -hmm. And it's of holes. Okay. Oh, like the the tricolo something? Is that what Yeah, so I would be watching YouTube videos, as one does, and scrolling through, like, suggested videos, and constantly would be getting videos of, like, barnacles and other little, like, circular things on boats, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. And it would, like, cause, like, this intense visceral reaction of where I wanted to just vomit as soon as I saw them. And I still, to this day, and it's just been, like, I would say, like, within the last two years that's been happening. Yeah. And, like, when I see too many holes in one spot, I literally almost hurl every time I see it. It's, <laughs> And I'm like, this is a new fear because I have, like, never had this experience, like, prior to these last two years, mm-hmm. never been bothered. Weird. But, like... Some things just really trigger it. And and so, like, for some reason, YouTube just kept suggesting these videos of these, like, barnacle pull videos. And it was, like, literally, I would just be, like, I would have to set my phone down and I'd get the whole heebie-jeebies, you know? Like, my whole body would start shaking. And I was just, like, I've literally never had this happen before. Why am I afraid of holes now? (laughs) It's a weird adapted fear to have. Yeah. Isn't it? And it's, like, I can't think of anything that would have possibly triggered that as a fear, but... Here we are. Here we are. <laughs> so, thanks yeah. YouTube. Um, figure <laughs> it out because stop suggesting those videos. <laughs> Literally. I can go off that visceral fear. Um, yeah. Again, like you said, it's kind of a fear, kind of not. Spiders. Mm. That that visceral reaction. School, reading textbooks, science, flipped to a page that had a spider, jumped. Oh. Yeah. Okay. If I'm scrolling through TikTok, sometimes a spider video will pop up. I'm just like, can't look, yeah, scroll, yeah. can't look, scroll. <laughs> That's why I'm like Get dreading away. your tattoo. I'm Every time I see it, I'm just going to like jump. Doesn't have to be so real. Spider. Halloween. Yeah. My grandma sent me a box, had a little spider in it. I was on the phone with my mama. I was opening it up. She heard me throw it because I wasn't prepared for there to be a toy spider a in it. A spider in there. See, yeah, there's some things that really just like shake you. And it's not even, like, I don't know. It's just a total involuntary reaction to those things. You just can't help it. But also, like, sometimes I'm fine. Like, killing a spider. Yes, I do kill them. Okay. No survivors. We're at war. (laughs) No survivors. (laughs) No. Unless it's too big that I'm scared to kill it. And then it's just going in a cup till someone else comes along to deal with it. (laughs) Somebody else can take care of that one. (laughs) Deep fear, though. Black Widows. Brown Recluse. Spiders that yeah. can kill you. Deep fear of that, but fear. the rest of the spiders that hide in caves underground. Oh, like, no thank you. Yeah, why did school teach me about that? They just hide in, like, holes and then, like, jump out for you? Uh-uh. Yeah. yeah. No. no. thank you. But, yes. but, like, in college, people would be like, can you come kill the spider? And I'd be like, I guess. Yeah, exactly. There's... There's things that, like, sometimes I'm like, yeah, I can kill the spider. And then there's other times I'm like, oh, I ain't touching the spider. Depends, depends on the leg to body ratio, the color, <laughs> the time if of day. Jump. 
If it can jump, I'm out of the building. I'm gone. Burn it down. Or the ones that run really fast? Absolutely not. Oh, I hate not. those. I hate them. Mm-mm. Ugh. Nope. Not me. Not, not Also, them. if there's someone else who can kill them, yeah. I'll be the baby. I, I'll be- Oh! <laughs> if I have to be yeah. the strong one, I'll do it. But if I don't, also, then just I'm... bugs in general, though. I have a, like, deep fear of just being, like, swarmed by bugs. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I was in Hawaii, bugs. and I remember yeah. there was a cockroach in our bathroom because we were staying at, like, a camp. Ugh. Yeah. Yucky. Yeah, we got to play the fun game of can I pee before the cockroach gets me? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or can I shower before he comes back? Oh, God. But then a gecko ate the roach. So it was oh. a weird circle of life moment. The circle of life. Yeah. It's the circle But I literally of slept life. in like a hoodie and like wrapped my blanket around me. So I'm like, no bugs are getting in my bed. No. 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 I am safe. Yeah. These ones are like deep fears that I will probably never, ever get over. Number one, heights. Oh. I will, to this day, will never get over my fear of heights. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I can fly, I can, like, go on a plane, and that's that doesn't bother me, but, like, heights in general, no. Not doing it. You know what, I think it's a coordination issue, because, like, or, like, a sight thing, I don't know, because certain things I'm fine with. Ladders? Uh-uh. But, like, <laughs> I, like, tall buildings are fine, especially if you're, like, inside the building. It's a little bit sketchy on the roof, as long as I don't have to, like, walk up to the edge. Or if there's railings, I'm pretty much fine. But like, step stools, ladders, Mm-mm. not me. <laughs> but I will climb see, on a countertop to get to a cabinet. See, I have no problem. Countertops, like short ladders, no problem. Buildings do scare me. Okay. Mm-hmm. Third floor, fine. Once we hit that 10th floor, uh, probably not going to be there. I get terrified when I start looking out the window. I'm like, Mm, no. When you start going even higher and you can start to feel the building, like, ooh, no. Dude, that's so scary when you do that. We had a school <laughs> dance on a building like that and it was just like... You could literally feel it and you're like, no, I'm done. All the kids jumping, you're like, this building is rocking. It's going to collapse. Like, we're done. Have you ever been to New York? No. <laughs> okay, one day, those tall ones. one day we're going to New York and you're going to the top of Rockefeller Center. My dad came up there and was like, I'm not leaving the gift shop. Mm-mm. See, um, parents, parents and everybody, we went to Seattle, to the Space Needle. Everybody's like, we're going up. And I'm like, I'm not. And they're like, you have to. And I was like, I am not. And they're like, just do it. And I was like, fine. We got up to the top. I cried. And they're like, I guess you could go back down. I was 20. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I am like, no joke. Uh, Like scared. Like I cried. Here I'm 20 years old. And I was like, I'm crying. I'm going back down. Like I rode up the elevator with you guys. That's as much as you get. Because I'm going directly back down. Were you there after they put in the glass floor? Yes. Okay. I have not been there in years, despite living there, because why would I go there if I live there? Um, yeah. But back then, there was no glass floor. And even then, I hated walking on the observation deck. It was already, like, just the way it's shaped and everything it really makes you feel like you're falling. But yeah. I refuse to go now that there's a glass floor, because I don't care how structurally sound anyone says no. that is. The glass is going to crumble and we're all going to die. Same with the Grand Canyon. Couldn't pay me. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, Washington Monument. Eighth grade. We went to uh, Washington, D.C. We got to do all the things. No, We got to the Washington Monument. I was like, I am not going up there. And they're like, "Uh, the whole class is going. You have to go. And I was like, I am not going up there. I will throw a bitch fit if I have to. I am not going up there. And they were like, okay, well, you have to call your mom and tell her that you're not going. And it's your fault. And I was like, okay, I will. (laughs) She's not here. She doesn't care. And so my teacher's like, I guess I'll stay down here with you. I've been up there before. And I was like, okay, you bet you will, because I'm, you won't catch me going up there. (laughs) 
And so I had to literally call my mom crying and be like, hey, they tried to make me go up the Washington Monument. <laughs> and she's like, that's okay. Like, you don't have to. Just don't skip other stuff. And I was like, I just didn't want to go up on the high, the heights. And she's like, that's yeah. fine. <laughs> what grade were you in? Eighth grade. Okay, that would have been... You're in eighth grade... Do you remember, yeah, like, year, when? Before my eighth grade. Like, summer? Seven, or? Sev- yeah, s- uh, summer after seventh grade, before eighth grade, I believe. We might have been in D.C. at the same time. Oh? We need to go back and figure that out Um, at I some point. I did tour with a random school because <laughs> it was only three people from my school could go, so we, we had to pair up with another random school. Well... It wasn't a school that we, it was, um, it was called People to People that I did. Okay. I don't know if it's still called that or what, but it was Eisenhower's granddaughter's program. Oh, no, we went through our school. <laughs> I met an so. astronaut somewhere on Facebook. Oh. There's a picture of me with an astronaut, but no one I knew had Facebook at the time. So we never got the pictures from that, but oh. somewhere well. there's a picture of me with with an astronaut. Yeah, and like a kind of famous one, but I don't remember who we he don't was. Know, don't know who it was. <laughs> but I was in DC and New York that summer. So we could have been there okay. at the same time. But they didn't let us go. We weren't going to the Washington Monument because it was like, it had um, all the like scaffolding around it at the time because like there had been an earthquake recently or something. Oh, so we, we went up, so... I literally the way they talked but about I, it, it was like structurally literally. unsafe to even go in. No, literally. <laughs> I was like, no. And they're like, you can feel it swaying. It's kind of cool. And I'm like, no. no. <laughs> Why would that be cool? <laughs> Plot twist. Not- me and Quinlan saw each other. <laughs> Didn't we know. literally star crossed crossed paths and never oh. never knew. Didn't even know. Well, have, yeah, we should find the dates that we went because that would be funny. That would be the funniest thing ever. If we were there at the same time. Yeah. Oh, that would be hilarious. Well, uh, we're going to go find out if we had a moment and we're both in uh, DC at the same time. Woohoo. We, yeah. That been, that's going to be so crazy. We got to look this up right now. <laughs> Literally, plot twist. Uh, we will let you know in our next episode because this is some wild information. New to us. New to us. New to everyone. And with that, we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, Cub Scout.